Hey, hello, and welcome to this tutorial on MIDI Artnet. Today, today I'm going to talk you through some of the features of MIDI Artnet to show you what it's capable of. So whenever you start the application, uh, you'll see this blank canvas uh, with a drop-down here that's asking you to select a MIDI device. Today I got this launch control from Novation connected so that I can show you either uh, both buttons and faders um, and now it's connected. Um, what we can do with this application is control Artnet and with Artnet we control different lighting fixtures uh, or LED panels. Um, so this application gives us a great tool to uh, add some features and have a cheap way to control your RGB uh, strips and stuff like that. So now that we have a controller assigned, we have to add um, items or as we call them, notes. So uh, there are a, co a couple of ways to do that. So we can either do new item, we can add the plus or we can do the shortcut command shift N and this gives us a new item. So first thing we want to do is enable the item. Then we can either choose if this item is a fixed value, a MIDI note, uh, or a MIDI control value, which is uh, a slider. So let's do a note on and note off. And then we get a MIDI learn button. So let's click the learn button and let's click uh, a pad on our MIDI device. And as you see now, we have assigned channel nine, node 73 um, to this item. And now we can decide what to do with it. So um, let's go to universe one, address one and value one. So uh, we're gonna uh, control the first value of the first universe. What we have here is a universe viewer. It's actually like an um, Artnet viewer, um, but then built in. So if we're correct, we should be able, if we press the button, yes, there we go. We see the one light up, which means that we send a, a um, a 255 on that value and that's described here so that's the behavior flash so when I touch the button it's on when I release it it's off um, and the low value is zero the high value is 255 and there's no animation so to give you an idea of what this looks like in real life this is our ArtNet viewer um, and here you see that now on this universe, universe zero, we have some data when I push this button. So that's one thing. Another thing is that we can assign faders. So let's leave this for where it is. Let's make a new item. Let's enable that. Let's make it a fader. Let's learn it. This is my fader, channel nine, note 77 or fader 77. Universe zero, address not one. Let's go to two. Low is zero, high is two five five. And the fader curve is linear. And this means that now that we have our fader, we can move the value. And the value moves accordingly. Here we have a plotted version of it. So this way we can dim our lights. Okay, so, um, well, adding this like uh, 5, 12 times is like a lot. So we build in some smart stuff, like a repeat. Say for instance, you have a LED strip and it has like uh, 24 addresses and they're all white. So then we add 24. And now if we move the fader, you see that we have 20 we control from address two 22 ti 24 times this value. 
say for instance we have an RGB and we want to control all these channels separate. What we then do is add a stride. So adding a stride will skip some of the data. So now you see 2, 5, 8, 11, etc. is moving. So if we duplicate this and then duplicate that, and then up to note 1, which actually listens to the keyboard plus or minus, and the address 1, and do the same here, 1, 1, and then the same, 2. Now we have RGB, three faders controlling RGB. And you can see here in the top left that it's moving along, so that the input is coming in. So this allows you to really quickly animate any RGB LED strips for as long as you want. To speed this a bit up, we made a tool and it's called the clone multiple. And it does exactly what I did just by hand, but this allows you to automate that. So we have this MIDI CC control value. We're gonna duplicate it two more times with a DMX offset of one and a MIDI offset of one. And there you go, RGB. So um, these are all the kind of funny, funky little tools you'll find around. Okay, let's go back to the other features we have. So um, we can uh, say, for instance, like invert the value if you want that. So now the vader is inverted. And 255. Uh, we can change the vader curve. Uh, to anything you like. So, um, say for instance, we're gonna do six steps. Well, now um, the fader will only move in steps. So when I move the fader, it's like limited to those steps. It gives you a headroom. Well, um, most of them are self-explanatory and I would suggest you like, you know, go play around and, and, and see what the outcome is. One of the great things we can do is add a description um, so that we uh, we can keep track of what Fader is doing what. Red in RGB strip. And if I'm correct, we can add that to this list. There you go. Okay. Then let's see, because we have some other extra features here with the notes we didn't discuss yet. One of them is that we can set a toggle or a flash. So toggle means one press uh, toggles the button. So now it's on, press off, press on, press off. And the other one is flash. It's also sometimes called piano, but when I press it, and hold it, it's on, but when I release it, it's off. Same thing goes here. I mean, we can assign the value to the lower part and the upper part, and we can also invert this if we want to. So now you have an inverted button. And another cool feature we have here is the animation. So um, instead of just going on and from 0 to 255 and back to 0, we can animate the behavior. So um, we have an in and out animation, 500 milliseconds. The transition type, I'm gonna make sign in and out, nice and smooth. And you'll see, oh, sorry about that. Um, whenever I press the button now, you'll see there's a nice little curve going on here. And let's exaggerate that a bit by making that two seconds. There you go. Nice and smooth. So that way you can animate 
uh, fade ins, fade outs, but even wood buttons. And the cool thing is you can set it only to the out. So you have a flash on, but it fades out, you know? So if you want to do some cool stuff with lightings and, and have it fade out, you can do that with this. Um, well, these are all the kind of animations we have. Uh, some pretty weird sh stuff in it. And one other feature is MIDI out. And MIDI out allows you to light up buttons. So the codes for di this, I want to... Uh, I, you're able to, to find them in the manual of the device because it's device independent. Uh, um, so um, 127 is orange on the launch control and two is just red. So the button is now red and when I push it, it becomes orange. And here we can also add a um, description flashy button. All right. Um, if you have another universe, so for instance, you're going to do universe 2, you'll see that the MIDI view, the Artnet view below here is uh, changing along with the selected item. Uh, furthermore, we have here some things to duplicate, new items in the cloner you saw already. Um, there's a blackout, reset is pretty neat for if you're in the middle of something and, and devices got disrupted you'll just resend and reset all your MIDI uh, and here are some settings uh, which allow you to change the ports the frames per seconds and the broadcast address if you want to have it broadcast or narrowcast you can change it here well, I think this is it for now. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, uh, let me know in the comments. And if you like this, uh, please uh, share it and uh, give us a like. Thank you so much.